In this tutorial, we'll learn how to create a burning paper animation to reveal a picture hidden behind a simple page, as we see in this demo. Here we are using the pictures of three great people who brought a lot of change in our world, although the last two are now rivals, but they made enormous contributions. So let's start with Blender, and we'll first delete this default cube. Then from the Add menu, we will add a mesh plane from here, and we have to select the picture that we want to use in this animation. If we want to make the picture flat on the ground, we have to remove these rotation values. So we got the picture on a horizontal plane, and if we now switch over to the render view, we'll be able to see the actual picture. But it does not look very bright. It will look better if we use an emission shader instead of the principal BSDF. So let's go to the shader editor, and we have to switch over to the object mode from here. By default, we get these three nodes added by Blender, but instead of this principal BSDF, we'll add an emission shader, which we can get in the add menu. After that, instead of the principal BSDF, we'll connect our picture to this emission shader, and its output will go to the final material output node. And to see the actual result of this change, let's open our viewport in this corner panel, and switch over to the rendered view mode. So the picture now looks very bright and vivid, but this picture will appear on top of the page background, which means we need to use another picture here. So we'll just duplicate this image texture node that can carry a picture, and we have to select another picture, that will work as the background of our page. Now we'll connect this second image texture to a principal BSDF, which is already there, and we'll combine these two shaders using a mix shader. This mixing is going to be the primary node of this node tree. We will manipulate everything using this node, and its output will go to the final output node. Currently, we are mixing these two shaders in a 50-50 ratio, so we're getting a combination of the two pictures here. But we have to tactfully modify this mixing factor so that we get a circular cut from this picture, and we'll also animate that circle. So we need to calculate the distance of the shading point from the center of this target object. To do that, we need to add a few more nodes here, and it's going to be simple. First from the Add menu, we'll add a node called Texture Coordinate node, and place it here. We'll use the object output from this node, which gives the coordinate of the shading point with respect to the X and Y axes, and it ranges from minus one to plus one on both the axes as we see in this overlay. Now we'll take this object output and pass it through a vector distance node. Then the output of this node will go to a greater than node under math. Now if we connect this to the FAC factor of the mix shader we added earlier, we'll get a circular cut from our target picture. Now if we change the value in this greater than node, which is basically the radius, and slowly increase it, we'll get a dynamic circle for our picture, and this is how we can animate it from the start to finish. So we'll start with zero, and insert a keyframe for this initial value for frame number one. Then let's say we want to complete it within 100 frames, so we'll go to the end frame, or frame number 100, and change this value to 1, and we need to insert a keyframe as well. Now if we run this animation from the beginning, we'll get a dynamic circle that reveals our underlying picture on the page background. But instead of a perfect circle, we want some imperfections that will create a burnout effect. And whenever we want to add some small imperfections to anything like this, the noise texture comes very handy. So let's add a noise texture into this node tree. We need to develop it further with several other nodes, and once it is complete, it will look like this. You can see that we have added several nodes into this node setup, but these two nodes are of prime importance for the effect we are creating. We have to also make some keyframes for these nodes, and we have divided the entire animation into three parts, having four distinct keyframes. So we have to make a keyframe for each of these four frames if the total duration is taken as 100. First for this color ramp node, for the white handle, we can change the color values from this place. We need to insert a keyframe for each of the four frames, as shown here. And then we can see that we have added a subtract node, just after the distance node, and here we need to insert four keyframes, as shown in this chart. Then we need to insert some keyframes for the second color ramp, and also for the noise texture node. So let's go to the first frame, and insert a keyframe for the scale factor in the noise texture. Then for the color ramp, we have to enter a keyframe for this black handle. And we'll bring this white handle very close to the black one, or we can directly enter a value like 0.05 or 03, and we have to also keyframe this value. Then let's go to the last frame of this animation. We'll change the scale factor to say 10, and we need to insert a keyframe. And for this color ramp, move the white handle all the way up to one, and we need to keyframe this as usual. Then we'll move this black handle very close to the white one, and please remember that these are just indicative. You are free to experiment with slightly different values for these settings. Now we need to take the output of the second color ramp and connect it to the FAC factor of the final mix shader. So this node tree is almost complete. 
Let's play this animation and see the result. So we can see a nice effect exactly as we wanted, but there is a problem. The border of this circular cut is not very prominent, and we want a distinctive border, so let's see how to make it better. We have to change this strength value based on the output of this color amp node. So we can first duplicate this node, then we'll connect this color output to this duplicate color ramp, and the output of this node will then go to the strength input of the emission. But we need to also exchange these two handles in this color ramp, so we'll move the white handle to the left side with a value of zero. And we can move this black handle to increase or decrease the border thickness. If it's close to the white handle, it will add a thick border, so we can enter a value like 0.01 for the perfect thickness. Now if we play it from the beginning, we'll see that everything is working in a perfect manner for this burnout effect. But we're using a square, and you may want to do it with a different size, maybe with a rectangular paper. So you have to add a mapping node just after the texture coordinate and pass that to all other relevant nodes. We have done the same thing in this demo, as we have rectangular pages, and you can also download our free add-on for such page flipping. The download link is given below in the video description, and we have now added this burnout effect as well in our add-on in the paid version. So I hope you like this tutorial, thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.